Hello, my soccer universe. We have our four semifinalists, but my overarching theme after these quarterfinals, and it was already coming out of the round of 16 and the last stages of the group stage. I'm so tired of negative soccer. Absolutely. On Friday, it was France boring us to tears, and Portugal also playing a big part in that. And on Saturday, we knew England was gonna do it this way. It's just so frustrating to watch that these two coaches, Southgate and Deschamps, just don't let the teams off the hook. It is so frustrating to watch that they think with this negative football you can win it, and they actually might do it. I mean, the record speaks for both of these coaches. And this is the really annoying thing is that <laughs> Southgate is the most successful England manager. He reached his third semi-final in the fourth tournament. The other one was an unlucky loss to France. And Deschamps, yeah, we don't need to talk about it. He had a World Cup. He reached the final at the Euros. He reached the World Cup final. He maybe should have won one more trophy, but still. And yes, there were some great games in there as well. And there's always the hope. But the way this is going and the way the games were going yesterday, I'm actually really hoping for a Spain against Netherlands final. And I'm not saying this only because I've always been a Netherlands fan. This would be the much better final than if we get France against England. <sighs> so yeah, we had one boring quarterfinal yesterday where I think the wrong team won in the end. Although the penalties by England, <clears throat> credit to them. This was near picture perfect for a nation that is so plagued by penalties. And then we had a relatively entertaining, and I don't want to say great, but it was a really entertaining and in the end dramatic semifinal where the Dutch managed something they haven't done in a long time. Fight back for a win. The last time they did this was at Euro 2000 when they were down in the last group stage game against the French. So, bravo. And I think a lot of naysayers of Ronald Koeman are not panning maybe some apologies, although I still think that Ronald Koeman might not be the best coach, but I think for a national team, he might just work. And the Dutch are hitting form at the right time. Last thing, it is really annoying also that Austria won that Group D and the teams in second and third are now in the semi-final. It's annoying, but on the other side, it speaks also to the feat that they have done. Yeah, the Euros are very, very, very level. But before that, Jersey matchup bingo. This one was almost a no contest in anything because we knew exactly what was going to happen. I was surprised though, but pleasantly so, that England played in the navy shorts. It's a much better look for England. Absolutely love these shorts. And that made that game uh, look at least good. If it wasn't on the pitch, but at least the matchup was nice. Although I'm still not quite sold on the dark red for Switzerland, but I guess they want to mix it up a teeny little bit. And may I also mention I really love the Vapenit version of the Dutch jersey. The way that the Vapenit pattern comes through is just something else. And I don't see this on any other of the jerseys. They have all the same pattern, but on the Dutch jersey, it just works beautifully. Okay, to Düsseldorf we go. There was no shot on goal in the first half. And yes, I have to give Southgate a little bit of credit. I think England played overall better. This looked a whole lot more cohesive, a lot of more team play, but so adverse to any risk. Yes, I think England controlled the first half. There was not much coming from Switzerland. However, that was about it. That changed in the second half where I think Switzerland that ratcheted up the pressure a little bit. They realized, okay, England really doesn't want to play at a high speed, so let's use this to our advantage. You know, we attack and they always want to stay behind the ball. We can play through them a little bit. And, you know, suddenly Shaka was taking control of the game. And it's not a Bellingham, for instance. No, it is Shaka who takes control of the game. And suddenly Switzerland were the better team. They got the first two shots on goal early on. And the longer the game went, the more actually Switzerland felt comfortable. I mean, it was not that they were really knocking on the door, but they were at least on the front foot. And then in the 75th minute, Ndoye puts in a cross. I think Stones deflects it slightly and then it falls to Mbolo. Makes it 1-0 for Switzerland in the 75th minute. And it was deserved at that point. Honestly, there's a lot of envy from Austria going towards Switzerland. Because as good and as well situated as we are, the Swiss are always better. But I also have to say that as a supporter of a small nation like Austria, I actually wanted to see Switzerland go on in this tournament. Because I want to see that a small nation can also make it to a semi-final. 
and Switzerland have actually been okay to watch, sometimes even great to watch. So I was definitely more on the Swiss side than on the England side, I gotta say. And so it was really annoying that for once Southgate makes a change, <laughs> brings out Shaw, Ace and Palmer and they play. And Saka makes a run and puts it into the internet. Five minutes later, it's when they have to do it, they can do it. But then I said, and now it's again back to boringness. Nah, the game was a little bit more open now, but you know, as soon as it went into overtime, it all slowed down again. Until about five to ten minutes to go, when suddenly Switzerland, who meanwhile had brought on Zakaria Shakiri, created chances. And Sherna Shakiri hit the stanchion from a corner kick. I mean, that would have been goal of the tournament. And he can do these things. One remarkable point is when uh, Harry Kane, you know, he got checked by Akanji over the icebox, I guess, of the English team. And then he already looked a little bit uh, injured or whatever. And then he said, yeah, come on. And Ivan Tony comes on. On one side, you want to say, you know, Harry Kane is a bank at penalties. Ivan Tony is really good at penalties as well. It inevitably goes to penalty shootout. However, Switzerland were really knocking. They created more chances. They had a higher XG for sure. Yes, the soccer shot was great. But I want to see more of that from England. And then again, Lady Luck favors Gareth Southgate. To me, if the Czechs were the unluckiest team of the entire Euros, England are the luckiest team. That the penalty was taken in front of the England fans might not be an advantage. However, that you go first is always an advantage. And England go first. And I said it already in the opener, the England penalties were really well taken. And all short run-ups, they all had the pause, they all concentrated and then delivered. Especially Bellingham and Tony just waiting for the movement of Jan Sommer. That's ice cold. There was not a single penalty taker where I had the feeling they are not gonna make it. Whereas on the Swiss side, you knew already Akanji, he missed the penalty last Euros against Spain. And uh, also when Amduni stepped up, they all looked kind of eh. There was not this confidence there when you just sit on a run up and the country saw it. The first penalty for Switzerland saved and Switzerland were then just catching up and England didn't let them. Five perfect penalties by England. And the one I was really happy for was Bukayo Saka converting that one. As much as I wanted Switzerland to win, the one penalty I did not want to see missed was Bukayo Saka because of all the shit that he went through after the Euro final. But yeah, England are through and you cannot argue with the result. But you can definitely argue with the way that the result came about. Over to the one in Berlin. That's the one I'd always earmark. That could be a really good one. And it turned out to be a really good one. A really entertaining affair. Already the public. I mean, the Dutch usually bring tons of fans. But they were, of course, outmatched by the Turkish fans. I think it was at least 60, 40, if not 70, 30 Turkish fans in the Olympia Stadion. And yeah, Berlin is probably the biggest Turkish city outside of Istanbul. So uh, there was no surprise there that the Turks will have mega support. But there was at least a few Dutch pockets as well. The game started out, of course, I didn't see, but there was a huge thunderstorm coming through that fortunately did not come through at the penalty shootout because that would have annoyed me majorly. But I had some friends telling me, yeah, we had to watch the penalty shooter on the live ticker, which I don't quite get because, you know, if you have internet, you could stream it. But, you know, that's beside the point. In any case, the first few minutes, I was more wrestling with closing windows and finding the right channel so i missed probably the first five to ten minutes seemingly that the dutch had some good chances early on but after like 15 minutes or so turkey really took control i mean chalonogl and aragula the dutch didn't have any idea how to deal with them and if there's one thing that the turks are really good with that's that ball situation and crosses in and when Gula makes a cross in and Akadin has it into the net at that point it was actually fully deserved I did not understand why the Dutch couldn't get a grip on this game because the Dutch were actually quite good this tournament most of the time this made no sense to me how this Turkish team that was so on the back foot that was absolutely gassed at the end of the Austria game I mean they basically spent the last three days in the oxygen tank how good they actually were and all the credit to them this is a highly entertaining and fun side to watch. And yes, with all the emotions that they bring into the play and then is also brought on them by the public uh, surrounding them. I mean, they are the best supported team outside of Germany within Germany. However, I also have to give credit to Ronald Koeman making a big change because Steven Bergwijn 
could not get a foot on the field. And the Turkish tactics with the five on the back and then four in front of them, they had no idea how to break that down. So they took a page out of Austria's playbook and said, okay, let's bring on the big man. If in doubt, bring on Wout. Wout Weghorst comes on and suddenly there's a target man in the center that frees of Gakpo and Memphis Depay and it worked. The Dutch were better in the game in the second half. The only question is, can they turn around the game? Yes, they could. They created chances. They put Turkey on the back foot. You could see the Turkey again get into this desperation mode where just hanging on like they were against Austria. And yes, Arda Güler, they had a free kick. They could have made it 2-0. Hits the outside of the post. However, I think Verbruggen would have been there. Credit to Turkey. Always dangerous. And I think Baric, especially, hard-working striker. Really, really hard-working striker. Kept the Dutch always on the, on the toes. But the large portion of the second half, the Dutch controlled that game. And then they got the breakthrough when a Depay Cross hits the fry. It was a corner kick that they had was played short, which meant that the Turkish defense had to come out a little bit. And then the Dutch played nicely, Depay Cross and De Vrij, very free in the box, heads it in. And it's 1-1. And very shortly thereafter, I mean, the Dutch kept on under pressure and it's a Dumfries cross that just rolls across and there's Gakpo and Matt Mulder kind of jostling for the ball. Potentially was a penalty foul, but Mulder touches it and it rolls into the net. The Dutch have turned the game around. And at that point I thought, oh, now Turkey will come out and the Dutch will actually score the third goal. And yes, there was the chance by Gakpo and I think there was another one there where maybe this could have happened, you know, up until the 85th minute. But then where Turkey got all their power to really put the Dutch on the back foot. I mean, suddenly the Dutch were hanging back again. And I didn't understand it because you could have killed off the game. You let on the pressure. And that's maybe I think where also, you know, Ronald Kuma's tactics are not quite working well. There was a big save by Weghorst on the floor. There was a big save by Van de Ven and then a double save where two Dutch players basically saved off the line. And then it was a massive save by Verbruggen where Kiljoy, it bounces off him and he gets it off the line. Turkey were really knocking late on and probably could have had, maybe should have had an equalizer. Uh, then I felt, you know, Turkey, you got a taste of your own medicine because this is how you beat Austria and now the same thing happened to you. It was a great save at the end, but this time it was on the other way around. The Dutch see it through. The Dutch are in the semi-final for the first time since 2004, which is weird to me because, you know, when I started start watching, the Dutch in a Euro semi-final was almost a given. I'm quite pleased with that, but let's see how they will get on with England. And so we have a semi-final lineup on Tuesday in Munich, Spain against France. The French overall probably considered slight favorites, although the Spain and Spanish have been the better team. I personally would favor Spain in that one. However, if the game is played on France's terms, and we know it's going to be played on France's terms, then I think France has a, have a big chance. And then a very similar story between England and the Netherlands in Dortmund on Wednesday, where again, will the Dutch impose their play? And the Dutch are probably the best opponent that England have faced so far, at least the most capable. I think as a team, Switzerland is probably better but the Dutch have higher individual quality. So I guess Southgate will again play the hedgehog tactics by, you know, taking out the danger parts. As I said, I really hope for Spain against Netherlands because this will give us a better final. I fear it will be France against England. I mean, qualitatively, France and England are the best teams left in the tournament. However, they're not fun to watch. And that's what annoys me. A final thought is that I think at these Euros, we also see one interesting comeback, the comeback of the big men. You know, Germany, if in doubt, bring on Fulkrug. The Dutch, if in doubt, bring on Wout Weghorst. I think this is a very neat renaissance of the big striker, at least in international football, because they're an extinct species in club football. In any case, please let me know your thoughts on the games yesterday. Who do you think will go on to the final? Who do you want to go on to the final? Give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video. Subscribe to my channel if you want to see more videos like these. And I will talk to you soon about more things in my soccer universe. Bye. Hey there, I really hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, here are some videos and playlists that you may enjoy too. Also, please consider subscribing to my channel and hit the little bell icon so you get notified whenever something happens in my soccer universe. And with that, have a wonderful day. Bye.